Welcome to the EdChoice Eligibility Criteria Tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to present EdChoice information, illustrate the eligibility details of the EdChoice Scholarship Program, and introduce a number of example students and take them through the EdChoice eligibility process. The EdChoice Scholarship Program was created to provide students from underperforming public schools an educational choice. The scholarship gives those eligible an opportunity to use an EdChoice scholarship to attend a participating private school. The traditional EdChoice scholarship retains this primary eligibility criteria for students attending or assigned to attend an underperforming public school. However, later legislation created the EdChoice Expansion Scholarship Program that has a secondary eligibility criteria, specifically for students who are not traditional EdChoice eligible, but whose family income is at or below 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. To summarize, there are two separate EdChoice eligibility criteria, the traditional or regular EdChoice criteria based on student attendance or assignment to underperforming school buildings, and the EdChoice expansion eligibility criteria based on students not being traditional EdChoice eligible and living in families with a household income level of 200% below the federal poverty guideline. Note, there are specific documents found on the EdChoice website that you will need to reference for each potentially eligible student. The first is the current list of EdChoice designated eligible schools. Other needed documents include the EdChoice eligibility flowcharts, also found on the EdChoice website. We will be referencing both when student examples are introduced and eligibility is explored. In our video examples, we will present various student situations, then we will review the EdChoice eligibility charts and work through them to determine potential eligibility options. Please be aware that this tutorial will use fictional student data, but it will demonstrate actual student situations and how to resolve them. If you have any questions about student eligibility, please contact the EdChoice office. In our tutorial examples, we will identify a student, the grade level, and the district and building where the student is currently attending. In some cases, we may have to review where the student will be assigned next year. We call that the look ahead, and other factors may come into play. But for now, let's just focus on the basics. Once we have identified our student situation, we must find the appropriate situational flowchart and answer the questions correctly to arrive at the possible outcomes. We have eighth potential student eligibility situations. Any incoming kindergartner who turns five by January 1st, any incoming student grades nine through 12, public school student, community school student, private school student, or non-public school student, new student in Ohio, homeschooled students, and ed choice expansion students who are not eligible for traditional ed choice scholarships. We will need to choose the correct flow chart based on the student's current situation. In addition, it is important to understand that determining eligibility for the EdChoice Scholarship is based on correctly answering the series of sequential questions within the charts. It may be necessary to contact the public school district to ascertain some student information. Note, the EdChoice expansion chart should only be referenced after we have determined that the student is not traditional EdChoice eligible. Let's begin. In our first example, we have a student named Pat, a second grade student at Clark Elementary in Lincoln Local Public School District in Franklin County. So we must review the current public school student K-12 flowchart. Next, we must determine if Lincoln Local Public School District has any buildings on the EdChoice eligible list. We verify that Lincoln Local Public School District does have buildings on the list and that Clark Elementary is also on that list. After we verify that Pat is a resident of the district and is attending an EdChoice eligible listed building within the district, we can be confident that Pat is traditional EdChoice eligible. In our next example, we have Anne, currently a fifth grade student at Red Elementary. Red Elementary is a kindergarten to fifth grade building in Roosevelt Local Public School District. So we must review the current public school student K-12 flowchart and then review the list of eligible buildings. Red Elementary is not on the list of eligible buildings. However, next year Ann will move up to Green Middle School, a sixth to eighth grade building in Roosevelt Local Public Schools. 
So we will go back to the list of eligible buildings and see if Green Middle School in Roosevelt Local is listed. Green Middle School is listed. After verifying that Ann is a resident of the district and attends a building within the district currently, Ann will be assigned to an EdChoice listed building next year, the look ahead year, we can be confident that Ann is traditional EdChoice eligible. Now let's consider Ann's older brother, Billy. He is currently in the sixth grade attending Imagination Academy, a private school. We know that Billy's public school assignment for both this year and next year would be Green Middle School, where his sister is assigned next year. Would Billy be eligible using the same process as his sister? No. We must consider the student's current situation. Billy is a private school student, so we must use the private school flowchart for an accurate review. By using the private school flowchart, we verify that Billy is currently a kindergarten through seventh grader and not traditional ed choice eligible. Next, we must go to the expansion chart, and once there, we will verify that Billy is not traditional ed choice eligible, and if Billy's family meets low income guidelines, we would enter an application in the expansion system. But if not, then Billy would not be eligible for an Ed Choice scholarship. Our next example is Natalie. She is an incoming kindergartner that is four years old and her birthday is on December 26th. Her residence suggests that she would be assigned to Clark Elementary School, an Ed Choice listed building in the Lincoln Local Public School District. However, Lincoln Local Public School District mandates that all incoming kindergartners must be at least five years old by September 30th to enroll in kindergarten. Is Natalie eligible? Using the incoming kindergartner who turns five by January 1st flowchart, we may verify that Natalie will indeed be five years old by January 1st and would be assigned to a listed building in her resident district. Therefore, she is traditional ed choice eligible. Our next example is Franklin. He is an fifth grader living in the Taft local school district. He attends a community school. While the school that he would be assigned to attend for fifth grade in Taft Local is an eligible school building, the school that he is assigned to for sixth grade is not an eligible school building. Is Franklin eligible? First, we must find the Ed Choice Community School student chart. Once we verify that he would have been assigned to an Ed Choice eligible building this year, then we can be confident that he is traditional Ed Choice eligible. Where he would attend next year doesn't matter. Our next example is Paul, a fourth grade student currently attending an EdChoice listed building within the Taft Local School District. However, Paul and his family live in the Harding City School District. Is Paul eligible because he attends an eligible building? No. As it says at the bottom of the public school chart, students applying for the scholarship must attend within their resident district. This student, Paul, resides in the Harding City School District, but has chosen to attend the eligible building. Because Paul is not a resident of the district of the eligible building he attends, he is not eligible for the traditional Ed Choice Scholarship. Instead, Paul could only be expansion eligible if his family meets low-income qualifications. Our next student is Matt a ninth grade student residing in McKinley Local School District. He currently attends a private school. However, the school building that Matt would be assigned to attend for 10th grade is on the eligible school list. Is Matt traditional ed choice eligible? Using either the non-public school chart or the incoming student grades 9 through 12 school flow chart, we can verify that Matt is an 8th through 12th grade student that would be assigned to an Ed Choice listed building for next year. Therefore, on either chart, he is traditional Ed Choice eligible. This ends the Ed Choice Scholarship Eligibility Criteria Tutorial.